property review. What's going on y'all, attorney Tom here. As many of you know, I am trying to buy my first ever piece of investment real estate, but that has turned out to be a lot harder than I thought because everything seems so damn overpriced. So let's just jump into it. Property review. So the other day I was driving on Bel Air Boulevard, a street which I have driven on tens of thousands of times in my life, and I look to the right and I notice this church is for sale. This church sits on over one acre of land on probably the busiest street in Houston. So I immediately get home and I check the listing price online and initially my jaw dropped. Only $900 in $85,000. My very first gut reaction was there's no way this land could be that cheap. This is a, an entire acre on Bel Air Boulevard, prime real estate in the heart of Houston. But do you know the saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is? Well, that's the case here. So the first thing I do is I go see the property myself. And even going and seeing the property in person, I was just still in awe. I couldn't figure out what the deal with this is. Again, this is an entire acre in the middle of Houston on probably the busiest street for under a million dollars. You come here, you look at it. This is about the property line right here. So the property extends all the way back here, all the way around all the way up here. And if you look just on the other side of the railroad tracks, there's a bar, some warehouses, a mechanic shop over there. And your initial thought is all this space is free. And even though this area right here, we're behind the bus for a second, even though this area right here is electrical poles and not part of the property, it is basically free parking. It's free real estate. So you look at this entire acre and you think, wow, I could tear down this church and build a bar or a warehouse or five to 10 plots of houses just like this because on the next acre of land, there's something like 15 or 16 houses on an identical plot, a subdivision. You think this is a home run. And the entire time I'm thinking, man, this property, the land alone is easily, easily worth three and a half to five million dollars. No questions asked. So why don't I just buy it and then just put it up on the market for 3.5, four million dollars and make a lot of money. Well, when I drove there and was walking around the property to check it out for myself, I noticed behind the church there was an old defunct zoning billboard, a notice of hearing. So. I decided to go and do some research and I pulled up the minutes from that meeting. And this is what I found. So this is a zoning map of Bel Air. This right here is Bel Air Boulevard. This plot right here, the darker green, the second square is our piece of property. And this darker green is zoned BBOD, which stands for Bel Air Boulevard Overlay District. So the first thing I need to do is understand what the zoning laws or restrictions are for BBOD, the Bel Air Boulevard Overlay District. So the next thing I did is I pulled up the City of Bel Air's Articles of Incorporation and I looked at the zoning requirements for the Bel Air Boulevard Estate Overlay. So the permitted uses of the Bel Air Boulevard Estate Overlay are detached single family dwellings, public parks, home occupations, such as the requirements of section 125107, which by the way, stands for single family housing. So you can't make multiple houses. It has to be one house for one family. Utilities and facilities owned and maintained by the city. Additionally, for specific uses, you can have churches and houses of worship and or schools and the purpose of this district is to encourage large lot residential developments resulting in a grand boulevard of homes schools churches 
and houses of worship. Essentially, it is the first thing people see when they enter in the city of Bel Air, so they wanna make it really, really nice. Or at least that's the plan. But like I said before, there's already a 16 or 15 unit multi-property complex in the acre right next door to it. So it's kind of weird to have a old abandoned church, which is quite frankly defunct and not good looking, followed by 16 houses, followed by the proposed BBOD. So my thought was, okay, this is a slight inconvenience, but you buy the property, then you get it rezoned for commercial use or for multi-family use or multi-property use, and then you can make a ton of money. And this is where the problem happens. I clearly wasn't the first person to think of this. This is not an original idea. And the person before me very much tried to do this. I pulled up the minutes from his rezoning hearing. And I shouldn't say hearing, I should say hearings. So this property was purchased in 2007 and he was aware of the zoning restrictions when he purchased it. They purchased the property at a price they believe that would allow them to find a buyer that can conform to the zoning standards. The property had been vacant since the West Side Christian Church disbanded in 2012. The previous rezoning applicant submitted in 2014 and 2017, meaning they have tried to rezone this in 2014 and 2017 and 2019 with no luck. The owner added that they have support for most of the Bel Air community and have invited questions and comments from them. They have met with members of the community individually and collectively to address their concerns they have. They've spoken to the community regarding the buffers, a pocket park where they will plant trees and a permanent restriction will be self-imposed. They asked for the advice from Mr. Livingston, who's a market expert and a member of the Bel Air community. Following his advice and adhering to the zoning restrictions, they attempted to sell the property as is. And with a newly built home, they had to reduce the asking price twice Despite the price being reasonable from the start, Mr. Erbo would said that efforts weren't enough. No one was interested in the property for single family use. They had developed four single family residential plans within the last 18 months. So essentially that's a long way of saying at first they bought it, they tried to take it and make it a single family use as stated in the zoning restrictions. It is an entire acre lot, but it is not an attractive piece of property for someone to live in. It's right next to the railroad tracks and in between the railroad tracks and the property, there is electrical lines. So nobody really wants to live there, but it would make a great commercial asset. So essentially what the first paragraph of that meeting is saying is that they bought the property, they tried to make it a single family home in accordance to the zoning requirement, but nobody wanted to buy it. And that makes sense. It's right on the railroad track and in between the railroad track and the property is a huge electrical area, literally power lines. So that's not attractive for a homeowner. So even though that the space is literally one acre, which is almost impossible to get in the middle of Houston, it is just not a good location for that. However, it is an ideal location for a business. So that's where they're going with this next. 4301 Bel Air is a fringe property. He added that the surrounding area of the property is mixed. There is a busy road on the north front of the property with 32,000 vehicles crossing Bel Air Boulevard daily, a vacant center point lot and a single family home south of the property and a 15 unit townhome subdivision to the west. Essentially what the current owner is stating is that, listen y'all, it already is a mixed area. This isn't the Grand Bel Air Boulevard. On top of that, the church is already defunct and nobody really wants to live there. So the highest and best use of this property is for me to turn it into a respectable commercial building. Maybe put in some dentist office or whatever. It doesn't need to be a bar, but nobody's going to use this as a single family home. And in order to respect the other tenants, he is willing to segment the eastern half or a portion of the eastern half of the property and build trees and fences and whatever they want in order to ensure those 15 tenants have privacy. And it seems that most of the community is on board with this. However, there are individuals who come and speak at these public hearings against redevelopment and for this particular case, I'll give y'all a guess on who 
is opposed to redeveloping the land? And the answer to that is the 15 people who live right here. And I don't want to get into details because it does go over their specific names, but a lot of the people who did show up and gave their public comments on this particular section did live in those 15 units next door. Not all of them, but you know, a fair amount of people. So they came in and they basically said, hey, we don't want people or we don't want redevelopment in that area. A chief concern that they allege, not just the people that live next door, but the people, other members of the community who came in to speak up against the rezoning of it, allege that the area is a flood area, which is true. And if we put more buildings there, then it would increase traffic and or increase flood risk to the other area. So they essentially want that area used as a retention pond. And I totally get that point. You want land being put to its highest and best use. But the fact of the matter is, which I'm sure is very frustrating for the landowner, is it is private property. If the city of Bel Air wants to purchase that property for a fair and reasonable value and then turn it into a retention pond, that's their right. But essentially what these individuals are advocating for is that this property owner not be able to develop this property, even though nobody wants it, and it's just a defunct old church, which goes against the Bel Air Boulevard overlay district because the whole point of the district is to have beautiful looking aesthetic. So even though it technically is a church, which, which is allowed, it is abandoned, which, you know, again, is kind of not the point. So what these individuals who don't want this development are saying is that this needs to be a flood retention pond, but they don't have any action or suggest that the city of Bel Air take anything. So they're basically just saying, hey, keep the zoning restricted so it can never be changed and this property owner gets the squeeze. Okay, and I'm not gonna get into the politics of the city of Bel Air because I don't really care that much, but I'm talking about it from an investment standpoint. There is opposition to having this thing rezoned, which is important to think about. And it's funny, you can see the price correlation between the zoning restrictions and the price of the property. So if we look here, in 2017, this thing was listed for $3.5 million. This is presumably before the zoning meeting took place, the second zoning meeting. Because remember, 2014, 2017, and 2019, it was all denied. Then it's changed to 2.8 million, and then to 1.4 million, and then back to 2.7 million, then 2.6 million, then 1.25 million, then 985 thousand dollars so clearly what's happening is the guy who bought this property can't sell it he's paying taxes on it he's paying a mortgage on it and nobody wants it so ultimately there's huge upside on this property literally without spending a single dollar on building anything if you were able to buy this property and get it rezoned you could then flip it probably for 3.5 4 million dollars without a doubt However, if you buy the property, it might not get rezoned. There have been three attempts in the past, presumably by somebody who had the same idea as me. So this is the definition of a high risk, high reward property. I, as a first time real estate buyer, cannot be taking such a huge risk like that. I do not have a million dollars to just go ahead and throw at a gamble at a property, even though the upside is huge and you could literally three or four X your money, I just can't do that. I need to hit a single, you know, I can't be swinging for the fences. I just need to do something that's safe. And it's hard to do something that's safe because everything seems so overpriced. So even though this property is a great location and it's cheap objectively for what the land is, the land is restricted and there are total risks associated with that. So I am going to have to pass. But I wanna know what y'all's thoughts on this are. Please leave any comments, questions, concerns down below. Tell me what I'm missing. Tell me how my analysis is wrong. Again, I want to learn from y'all just as much as I hope y'all learn from me. This is a journey literally starting from zero. Please consider subscribing to this community if you want to join. We just passed 314,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Hit that like button. It really does me a huge favor. And thanks for watching. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Thank you